Hello. Welcome to our session. Uh, we really appreciate you choosing to spend the next 40 minutes here with us, given the number of things we're going on at I.O. It's a really busy time. Um, my name is Benjamin Schramm, and I'm joined here by Jennifer Miller and Brittany Minuti. And we're all, uh, all from the team at Google uh, working on immersive computing. We want to talk to you today about using immersive computing for teaching and learning in a few really important and really different contexts. But first, I want to make sure we're all on the same page about what we mean by immersive computing. I mean, in the simplest terms, we mean VR and AR. VR that can take you anywhere, like to the Taj Mahal, to another place in time, down to the atomic level, wherever. And AR that can bring you anything, a dinosaur, a jet engine, Da Vinci's 15th century design for a helicopter, or just information about the world around you. But the reason we say, and we'll continue to say, immersive computing is that at Google, we look at these technologies as occupying different areas on a shared spectrum. And increasingly, all points on the spectrum are beginning to blur together more and more. So the plan today is to spend a few minutes walking through specifically why and how we see this technology being used uh, for teaching and learning. And again, we really mean teaching and learning in the broadest sense. Uh, so I'll share some updates about Google Expeditions. Jen will talk to us uh, about our efforts to bring this technology to higher education. And then finally, Britt will walk us through Tor Creator. OK, so why are we here for the third I.O. in a row talking about this? Like, what's the big idea here? For us, the really powerful idea is that we have an opportunity with almost any technology on this immersive computing spectrum to help turn the abstract representations of things that form so much of our education, of our work, of just sort of how we perceive the world into more concrete experiences that activate our minds and our bodies and allow us to learn by experience, sort of a continuation of how we all learn things as kids. And for the set of things we're going to talk about today, what we want to enable is this technology makes those concrete experiences much more regular things, much more accessible and as effective as possible. And this is really important because we all need it. Like, our, our kids will need it. Future generations will need it. So two years ago at I.O., I posed this classic math problem to the audience. And I wanted to check back and see if anyone <laughs> got the answer in these last two years. I've actually now learned this is a, it's a classic problem. It's actually called the age of the captain problem. Many, many studies have posed this or similar sorts of questions to primary and secondary students. Anyone have an answer? Anyone know how old the captain is? It turns out a majority of your average sort of uh, primary and secondary school math students will produce a numerical answer to this question. 66 out of 97 in the most recent study I could find. And the researchers in that study actually term this phenomena the suspension of sense making, which now that I know it is actually a really useful phrase uh, in all kinds of contexts. Uh, but it's kind of the doomsday scenario for when learning becomes too abstracted. And I think it really illustrates for us both the challenge and the opportunity that we have before us. The opportunity is that instead of asking a student like, why they should spend time studying why ancient Rome was important, uh, or asking them to just appreciate these like, amazing artifacts of human history with just some little pictures in a textbook or a video on a little screen, you can let them explore it in VR, like they were there in Rome. You can give them this bite-sized, field trip moment. It engages their mind, their body, it gives them the agency to look around. Or you can let them evaluate a statue of a powerful woman in history like Cleopatra, like it was standing right in front of them. Another way to think about this uh, is a theory that's popular among cognitive scientists who study learning, so-called cognitive load theory. People heard of this? It says that like, our ability to learn, sort of, you can think about it like it's a funnel. And basically, it states that the total mental energy that we have to learn something is what's left over after you've subtracted the inherent difficulty of the thing that you're trying to understand or learn, plus the effort required to understand how that concept is presented. So what you're left with is the mental energy you have left to learn. So like if fractions has like an inherent difficulty of x, there's this like other difficulty of y that's just like um, trying to understand how fractions are presented to you or how it's taught to you. And we can't do much about the inherent difficulty of these concepts. The world's like a really complicated place. 
But we can do something about that orange part of the funnel, about how information is actually presented to people when they're trying to learn it. But when you look at so many of the places that learning actually happens, like classrooms and lecture halls, they really aren't set up to like, lessen that cognitive load. They're basically only set up to explain things with words or 2D drawings. And then you realize that not a lot's changed in hundreds of years. Like this is how we were teaching people in the 15th century. And for us, it makes scenes of using students uh, using AR in their class like, seem almost overdue. So let's start by talking about Google Expeditions. We launched Expeditions uh, at I.O. Uh, three years ago. And it's been incredible to watch it grow. Uh, and now tens and tens of thousands of schools are using it every single day. And at its core, Expeditions really hasn't changed much from how we first conceived it. It's a tool that allows a teacher, or we call them a guide, to take groups of co-located students on virtual field trips or show them virtual things. And since we announced it in 2015, we've continued to see it grow, and we've continued to add features to make it even more powerful and even more accessible. And as of today, we're really excited to show that over 3 million students and teachers have participated in one of our pioneer programs, and that Expeditions has been installed on over 6 million devices. And we're so encouraged by the continued enthusiasm and excitement we've seen from teachers and students who have been using it for multiple years now. In addition to the steady stream of qualitative feedback we've received, we've also started to get some real quantitative data back as well. And it's still early days for this stuff, but in a recent study we worked with uh, SRI, uh, we worked with researchers at SRI, we found that students that used Expeditions VR as part of a specific science lesson uh, outperformed those students who used that same lesson but with traditional 2D media, like pictures and video. And they did so by a statistically significant number. So I wanted to share a few of the things that we've learned along the way and some things that we're doing to make Expeditions even better and even more accessible. So first, we learned that why cardboard might be an awesome material out of which to build like a universally available VR headset, it might not be the best material out of which to build a VR kit for schools to use uh, Expeditions with. This was the first Expeditions kit box we made back in 2015, and we were so excited when it <laughs> arrived. We thought it was the, the coolest thing ever. We had cardboard headsets, we had a cardboard kit. Well, there was our Expeditions cardboard box after about two hours in a, in a classroom. Big surprise, right? Classrooms are harsh environments for technology. So we knew we had to bring on some partners to help us. And so today we have kits like this in school across the world. Who here wishes like they had a VR cart like that in their class instead of a TV cart? Yeah, <laughs> me too. We now have over 10 different partners offering kits in over a dozen different countries. We've also learned that if we want to reach the most number of learners possible, with technology like VR and AR, we need to remove as many technological prerequisites as possible. So we started by allowing expeditions to work offline so that even in schools like this one in Ghana, they could travel the world with VR. Or in this school, hundreds of miles up the Amazon River, they could go outside and compare their environment to ones all the way across the world. So last year, we removed another prerequisite and made expeditions work for users who didn't find themselves in a classroom or in a group. And we've actually seen lots and lots of teachers use this solo mode in their classes to let their students explore the world on their own. And we'll soon be updating the expedition's home screen to make self-guided tours much easier to discover and jump into, while still making it really simple and straightforward to use in class. We've also been making some really amazing new content like this set of expeditions we made with the Earth VR team that brings the incredible experience of seeing Google Earth and VR to Cardboard and Daydream. And we used the technology the Daydream team recently open sourced and made available called Surat. Surat allows you to take a highly complicated 3D mesh, like the scene from Google Earth of New York City, and simplifies it down to a scene that, within a limited head box, can be viewed on mobile VR devices. It's really, really powerful stuff. And it's especially really powerful stuff on the recently announced Lenovo Mirage Solo device. These sorts of expeditions really, really come alive with the sort of six degrees of freedom you get with the Mirage. And we've continued to add just more and more engaging and interesting content to our library of expeditions. 
We now have over 800 different expeditions spanning history, STEM subjects, art. There's really something for everyone, every teacher, every student, every curious adult. We've also continued to partner with the real experts in the field of educational publishing, like HMH. We now have a series of expeditions that supplement their textbooks. And as we were discussing at the outset, make all that important information contained within the textbook become more accessible and concrete with a set of accompanying VR content. But most importantly, we've learned that when you take students to amazing places, like underwater or among coral reefs, they really want to investigate the things they see there, like coral or sharks. They want to get up close. They want to take the opportunity to look at this guy right in the eye, to look at those rows of sharp teeth. So Expeditions AR is our answer for how you bring that shark into the classroom, such that everyone remains dry and intact. We gave you a preview of Expeditions AR last year at I.O., and we spent the last year taking our beta application around to schools all over the world. Over one million students uh, and teachers participated in our beta. They gave us their thoughts. They helped us refine it and improve it. We wanted to take this chance to thank them for such thoughtful feedback, for seeing through some of the early rough edges, and for just inspiring us to build it each and every day. Go ahead and check out hashtag Google Expeditions on Twitter if you wanted to see some amazing scenes uh, of people using Expeditions AR. The feedback that we've received has been super encouraging, like this ninth grade teacher from Boise, Idaho, who saw her classroom come alive. We love that last part in the quote most of all, that students have become both the teacher and the learner. And this is really the holy grail, giving amazing teachers like Karen the technological instruments to make moments like this happen in our classroom. So Expeditions AR will be shipping as a major update to our already launched app. AR will live alongside VR in the same binary, and we'll be shipping it at the end of the month with over 100 different AR expeditions composed of the objects that span the same breadth that our VR tours do. History, art, chemistry, biology, natural history, math, the list goes on. And I want to give you a quick run through of the features we'll be launching with. First, as we do in VR, one of the most powerful tools that we can give a guide is the ability to draw the group's attention to specific areas or points of interest. But we needed to design a new way to point out parts of the object. So we built a spotlight feature that lets a teacher shine a light on part of the object such that all the students can see it. The teacher can move that spotlight around. They can make it a pinpoint or a floodlight. It looks really, really cool. We also learned that the bigger the elephant, the better. But the spaces people have available to them are all different sizes. So you need to be able to quickly resize it uh, and let that propagate to all the connected devices. And while we don't use markers for tracking, we learned that physical marker images can actually be a great way of establishing a common reference point for large groups uh, that are viewing the same object. So with Expeditions, you can put down up to eight different markers around your space, and the objects you choose to show your group will display right on top of them. This helps to ensure you don't have like 30 kids crowded around the same object. And just like we have a solo mode in VR, we also have a solo mode in AR. So if you aren't guiding a group, you don't need a marker. You can just tap on any plane that your device detects to place that object and have a look. And you get all of the explanatory information in a little card to read about. Like, who doesn't want the Mars rover on their table? So as I said before, Expeditions AR will be shipping at the end of the month as an update to our current application. There's no need to install anything new. To experience AR, you'll need an AR core-enabled device, like a Pixel. But for schools that love their VR kits, and there are more and more and more of them, Best Buy Education will be offering a best of both worlds, VR and AR kit, built with the Asus Zenfone AR. And this device does high-quality AR and VR just beautifully. We're also really excited to announce that the recently debuted Acer Chrome Tab 10, the world's first Chrome OS tablet designed from the ground up for use in schools, will be supporting both AR Core and Expeditions AR. And finally, for those schools with AR Kit enabled iPads, we'll also be bringing these same updates to the Expeditions iOS app. And just like Cloud Anchors that you may have heard of in an earlier session, it'll work cross platform. So you can use an Android device to guide an iOS device, or vice versa. So that's it for Expeditions. 
a beautiful new UI, a powerful set of AR features, and a bunch of cool AR content to go with it. It's basically a museum in your pocket. OK, so we're going to change gears here a lot. Thank you. We're excited, too. Thank you. Uh, beyond K-12 learning, we're also seeing lots and lots of signs that this technology can create engaging experiences uh, for university students. And to talk to you about that, I'd like to introduce Jen. Thanks, Ben. Beyond the curriculum, we quickly learned that there was even broader learning opportunities with VR. In the same way that learning can be an abstraction for many students, going to college, going, pursuing different careers is an abstraction for students around the world. These students don't have access to the mentors and the professionals in their life that have experience going to college or have experience pursuing different careers. So for the past few years, we've been creating hundreds of college and career expeditions to enable students to be able to visualize what it's like taking that step across that graduation stage and accepting that diploma. Or, you know, taking that first step and applying for that dream job. And along those same lines, many educational programs have not been traditionally represented by women and minorities. And it can be difficult for these students to imagine what it's like to participate in these programs. But we know VR can help with this. One school, the New York Tandon School of Engineering, has taken this to a completely another level. They were looking to improve the impact and the diversity of their incoming freshman class. So they created a VR app, and they enlisted the help of students and faculty and built a bunch of different experiences showcasing the different projects and programs happening on their campus. And the admissions team created these custom branded cardboard, sent out a letter to all admitted students with instructions on how to actually download the VR app. And apart from doing this, you know, to separate themselves from other schools, the immersive experience, mainly highlighting the work of female students and faculty and narrated by a woman, has helped to increase the female uh, acceptance rate of students by over 10% in just two years. Yeah, come on, we can cheer for that. <laughs> That's so impressive. When the admissions office surveyed that incoming class, many cited the VR app as one of the reasons why they chose the New York Tandon School of Engineering, because they could visualize what their four years were going to be like on campus and get to experience you know, working with different faculty and students. And beyond using VR for admissions, we're seeing professors like Adam Blumenthal from Brown University capture historical sites using Google's jump camera, and then marking those up, those videos and 360 photos up in Tilt Brush and using tools like Blocks and Poly to vividly recreate important, important historical moments in history. Like the Gatsby Affair, which happened off the coast of Rhode Island. It was a dramatic event in the lead up to the American Revolution. Students can now walk through this virtual tour and experience a preserved part of history. But not all faculty are like Adam and know how to build immersive content. So to help faculty and students get started, we created a free VR video course for anyone to be able to take. And we'll also be launching a v an AR course this summer. We've also provided schools with sample projects so that, to help them get inspired for how they can build experiences using VR and AR. And we've also established a hardware loan program so that schools can apply and get the necessary hardware to help them get started on their first projects. Since launching the VR video course and the hardware loan program this past fall, we've received really positive feedback from, feedback from students like Michael here, who have actually taken the course. And one thing that we're seeing is that more and more students, like Michael, are going online to pursue an education. In fact, 32% of students took an online course just last year. This is a really powerful notion that your access to a great education is no longer dependent on your geographic proximity to one or dependent on having all-day, in-person class.
classes. Imagine if you wanted to pursue a career in, let's say, nursing, and you had to take a set of prerequisite courses like biology, and your closest university is 200 miles away. Okay, you might decide it's worth it. And so you go and you look up the courses that are being offered, and you realize that biology class is offered Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 1 to 4 p.m. But you have a full-time job. You're probably not likely to register for that class, and you might also consider a different career opportunity that allows you more flexibility. Almost all degree-granting institutions offer courses online. But many popular courses and degrees, like biology, require in-person activities, like labs. Because of this, schools either don't offer those courses, ask students to pay really high course fees, or ask remote students to drive hours to attend these in-person activities. It turns out this doesn't scale, but we know we have the technology to enable these experiences. And that's why we're excited today to announce that in partnership with Labster, a science education company in Denmark, we have removed the physical lab requirements for an, to complete an online biology degree using virtual reality. Schools will now be able to truly offer an online biology degree. The 30 labs can fully simulate real-world outcomes using advanced simulations and mathematical equations, all built on the Daydream platform. These labs are economically efficient, as the cost of the VR headset and the content for the labs is still cheaper than the years of lab fees and it provides scale to a growing number of students that are pursuing courses online who previously were left out because of geographic constraints. Students are also able to have unlimited lab time, which is something that many schools can't offer today. And as one student put it, I no longer have to worry about having a bad TA. Students are also able to engage on a molecular level within these labs, which is impossible today. And we're really excited to announce that the first university that will be offering these VR labs to their students is Arizona State University this fall. <laughs> and what's also exciting is that these labs map to AP and IB courses for K-12 schools. So schools that want to supplement their existing curriculum with these VR labs can go ahead and do that. And for those schools that can't afford creating a whole VR laboratory in their school, they can offer these VR labs as a replacement. Labster also connects the lab progress with major LMS systems, including Google Classroom, which will be integrated this fall. And it allows teachers to actually track the progress of students throughout these VR labs. Labster has been able to help reduce all of the laboratory costs for schools by virtualizing hundreds of machines and equipment. I'm not sure what this HPLC or the PCR is, but I'm pretty sure I could do something fun with that fermenter. We think this is the beginning of something big. What better way to use the power of VR than to offer a powerful education? And with that, I'll hand it off to my colleague, Britt, who's going to talk a little bit more about how VR is being used in the classroom and beyond. Thanks so much, Jen. Programs like Labster got us thinking, how could we scale this kind of immersive learning to more people? And how can we make it easier to create this kind of content? Now, we all know that most of us don't have the expertise to recreate a million dollar laboratory in VR. But we also know that many of us have things to teach and stories to tell. And since the earliest days of expeditions, both teachers and students have asked for the ability to create their own. So we started to think about what it would be like to make it easier to create VR content. That's why, in January, we launched a beta for students and teachers to make their own expeditions. In partnership with RICO, we outfitted students and schools all over the globe with RICO Theta 360 cameras and kits of Chromebooks, cardboards, phones, tripods, everything they needed to create their own expeditions. We encouraged them to use the theme, Love Where You Live, 
so they could showcase their communities to other schools participating in the program. Let's take a look at the experience of one of these schools in Lancaster, Pennsylvania with this quick video. I was born and raised here in Lancaster. It is definitely a big farming community. You see family farms everywhere you go. And I think it's really cool that we have this opportunity to share like our way of life. How we're going to do this is using a new tool called Tour Creator. It's an interactive, easy to use tool that allows our students to create rich 360 degree experiences. You will see the photos that the Ag Department and the Art Department have supplied. Add a title and description, click on that, and then it'll bring up the street view. We can plug that into the actual tour. It will definitely inspire me to show more of Lancaster, and hopefully it'll inspire people to do the same. And it's wonderful that we can have our students interacting with all of these other student stories across the globe. This is Chicago's little village neighborhood. It's very close living quarters, very different from around here. We were just looking at the one from Bali. Their classes are basically outside. I really thought that that was neat. Everybody's different on the way they like living. And every place has a unique story. Now, Penn Manor High School is just one of hundreds of schools around the globe that have participated in this program. For example, Spry Links Community High School in Chicago made an amazing tour of Chicago's Little Village, showcasing all the awesome arts and culture the village has to offer. And the Green School in Bali made this amazing tour that showcases other students what it's like to get an education being completely immersed in nature. That's right, these students actually learn outside. And another school in Valdemoro, Spain, created a tour of all of the historic sites in Valdemoro to show other schools what their community was like. Now, these are just a few examples of over 300 schools that have participated in this program. And thanks to them, we now have a ton of feedback about what it's like to create your own expeditions. And as we were thinking through that feedback, it occurred to us that when it comes to this concept that Ben mentioned earlier of transforming abstract concepts to real ones, Perhaps expeditions like content could be useful outside the classroom. Let's take the example of buying a home. When you're purchasing a home, you might consult a whole bunch of resources like photos, brochures, blueprints, floor plans, in order to inform your decision. Now we can imagine how being immersed in a virtual tour of that home would give you a much better understanding of what it's like to actually live there. That's why we're super excited today to announce the launch of Tour Creator, a web application that gives anyone the power to create VR content. As of today, students, teachers, businesses, employees, folks like you and me, we can all create our own VR tours and easily share them anywhere on the web. When you go to Tour Creator, you start out by starting a new tour or picking up on a draft. And then you add some basic metadata, things like a title, description, category, and a cover photo. And then you fill your tour with scenes. Scenes are made possible through the use of 360 photos. Now, if you have your own 360 photos, awesome. You can upload them in just a couple of clicks. But if you don't, have no fear. We've integrated directly with Street View. So you can take advantage of the massive library of 360 photos already available in Google Maps. Once you add your scenes, you add what we call points of interest. These are essentially areas of importance that you'd like to highlight. And you can add a little bit of text information to inform your viewer. You can also enrich these points of interest with other media, like 2D photos. And in the future, we'll be adding narration and ambient audio to help your viewers feel like they're actually there. Now, when you're done creating your tour, you publish it to the web. You can make it public for anyone to see, or unlisted, so only those with the link can see it. And when you publish it to the web, you actually publish it to Polly. If you're not familiar with Polly, Polly is Google's library of 3D content launched late last year. Previously, Polly had things like 3D models, 3D sketches, and as of today, Polly will also contain 3D experiences in the form of tours. And this is where the true beauty of this product comes in. Because you're publishing your tour to the web, all you need to do to share it is share a URL. 
So that means you can view your tour in 2D on desktop or on your laptop computer. You can text a link to your tour to a friend or colleague. They can load it on their mobile device and simply use Magic Window to experience it. Or they can tap and enter VR button, put it in a Google Cardboard, and immediately be immersed in the tour that you just created. Now, you may be wondering, what is this magic? I thought when it came to VR, you have to install a bunch of apps, get some really expensive hardware. Well, this is all made powerful through a technology called WebXR that you might have heard at, at the previous I.O. session. WebXR means that you can experience VR content in your browser using any VR headset. Another beautiful thing about publishing these tours to the web is that you can easily embed them. Just go to Poly, click on a Share button, and you'll get an iframe snippet that you can put in any blog or website. And when you think about it, this can be truly transformational for business. Let's go back to the example of real estate that I mentioned earlier. Imagine a future where instead of seeing a series of 2D photos on a real estate listing online, instead you saw a virtual tour of that property that you were about to buy. Now you may be thinking, OK, maybe businesses will use this thing, but will they actually use it? Well, to validate that we were building the right product, we actually partnered with a bunch of companies across many verticals to get their feedback before we launched. And we want to share with you a few examples of what they've created. Time Out New York has been using Tour Creator to create tours of having the best day ever in New York City. Everything from Central Park, to Lincoln Center, to the New York Public Library. Imagine It Done, a company devoted to helping its clients, like style icon Lindsay Lane, organize their lives and their closets, has been using Tour Creator to showcase their expertise. Now, I don't know about you, but if I had that many pairs of shoes, I'd probably want to see a tour of how they were going to organize them. REA Group owner of realestate.com.au, the number one place for property in Australia, has been using Tour Creator to create tours to embed in both their website and their mobile app soon. As they've mentioned to us, Tour Creator allows their users to explore their properties from wherever they are. And of course, we've seen broad applications for this technology in enterprise training. KLM Airlines has been using Tour Creator to save lots of money on training costs by acclimating their flight crews to the aircraft before they even set foot inside. Now, it's one thing to hear about these use cases from us. It's another thing to hear about them direct from the source. So let's cut to a quick video where we'll share their feedback. Time Out has always been about helping people explore their city, and Tour Creator helps us do just that. It's really going to help us be able to innovate more in the digital world and really create new content. We get some cool 360 photos, and we just pop them right into Tour Creator. We pull images, information, fun facts, things to do in that area, anything you could really possibly need to know. We have some really cool tours through that. We can use Tour Creator to virtually see the aircraft, uh, which means that we can train the people whenever they want and wherever they want with uh, virtual reality. And that saves quite a lot of money. Spectrum Designs is a full-service custom apparel business with a mission to provide purposeful working opportunities and authentic vocational experiences to individuals with autism. Tour Creator has allowed us to habituate our staff and our employees before they even come in the building, before they take one step over the threshold into our building. Tour Creator lets us show them exactly what to expect, become acclimated to the building, to the noise, to the machinery. The Tour Creator tool brings everything to life. Clients feel so comfortable knowing what the spaces are going to look like by seeing it through this Tour Creator tool. It's indispensable. Thank you, thank you. We are super excited to launch Tour Creator to all of you today and can't wait to see all the tours that you're going to create. Later this year, we'll be introducing the ability to add these tours directly to the Expeditions app, so stay tuned for that. And with that, I'll pass it back off to Ben for some closing remarks. Thanks, Brett. So there you have it, a new powerful AR mode in Google Expeditions that packs a universe of places and things in your pocket and brings them into your classroom, onto your desk, right on top of your textbook. 
a holy online biology degree from Labster and Daydream that uses the power of immersive computing to make access to a great education not reliant on your geographic proximity to one. And finally, Tor Creator, a simple, powerful tool that makes creating immersive content accessible to anyone straight from their web browser. I want to close on a note about why this is so important. I can't really think about education and technology without thinking about this guy, Seymour Papert. 20 years ago, he observed that it might be time to reconsider our fundamental conception of like what a literal person, I mean, a, sorry, not a literal person, a literate person. <laughs> For hundreds of years, the primary way we've taught things or learned things in school was via the word, written word or symbols, reading, writing them. And while these are obviously critical skills, for many people, they're really challenging entry points. They're about as abstract as things get. But we have an opportunity to use technology to lower these barriers, to make learning richer, less abstract, to make all that important reading and writing that we do be augmented with the actual parts of the world that they refer to. And we can use photospheres, sounds, 3D objects, simulations, all the formats immersive computing enables to give learners more effective entry points into complicated subjects and ideas. So here's a quote from one of the teachers who participated in the Expeditions AR beta, and it really resonated with us. She refers to something I remember seeing every day when I was a teacher over 10 years ago. Many very, very smart students, they might not bring extensive textual literacy to their learning from the get-go for a bunch of different reasons, language barriers, their particular educational background, but we traditionally treat this like it's a blocker to their learning. We don't have to. We all, you all, we all have an opportunity to use all these tools, VR and AR, to give them a more natural, more inherently visual entry point to really important ideas and learning. And as this teacher says, we can help to level the playing field. So thanks very much. <laughs>